we're riding down to do some financial stuff this morning. Big Mama's helping us take care of this. And <laughs> she gets to talk about these. All right, go. Okay. Uh, to well, start then. in, it, explain your way into <laughs> Okay. With Joe Glenn was cutting timber in uh, forest back then. That was back in the old days. And anyhow, we were logging on the U.S. Forest Service, but this old guy that we were all crazy about lived close to us. And he was a little old guy, and he wore bibbed overalls. And he was always hanging around us because he worked in the timber business and stuff, and he was just a jewel. And uh, anyhow, Joe's cutting the tree, and he's hanging around with the timber cutters. And uh, anyhow, Joe told him, now watch that bee tree up there, because he said, uh, or a hornet's nest, I believe it was a bee tree, though, he said, because I'm probably going to brush it with this tree as it goes down, so be watching. So Joe com continues to cut the tree and loses track of Fred. And anyhow, Fred actually wandered down looking for this insect, whether it was bees or hornets, and the tree actually brushes him. Joe sees him too late. He's already turned the tree loose. So the tree comes down on top of him, and the limbs and stuff brush him, take him down to his knees, and as he falls, his suspenders come unhooked. So his bibbed overalls are down around his knees. So the old guy stands up because Joe's relieved he's still alive pulls his straps up and snaps his bibbed overalls and says, on there, I still don't see that bee tree. <laughs> <laughs> Scared Joe to death, of course. <laughs> and then... Well, who was the one with the Cadillac? He was getting ready to start well, going that was the, the same guy. He drove this big old Cadillac. He always drove a big old Cadillac. And, I mean, he was wonderful. Well, we was back in straight trucks at the time. We was just getting good and started. And I had picked up a roll of barbed bar wire for the, for, for the farm. And I had that barbed bar sitting on the floorboard in the truck. And I gotta be honest, it probably been there a week and I never took it off. So you come down off of one hill and you go through the dip and that's where Fred's uh, road comes out and then you go up another hill. So I'm flying along with my straight truck trying to get back there. And all of a sudden I can see through the bushes and stuff, the Cadillac nosing out into the road. So I hit the brakes cut to the right hand side and the nose of that old Cadillac comes about halfway out in the middle of the road and then just drops down. He hits his brakes. I got nowhere to go because we're coming up on a bridge button, but I'll give him all I can, get, can give him. And that roll of barbed wire rolls all over that cab, winds up getting stuck between the gear shift and my leg. So at that point, I realized if you've got a deadly weapon in the truck with you, you need to get it out. <laughs> but there's, there's a ton of stories about him. One time on his little narrow road, he actually ran into one of his sons. His son was like teenager, early 20s, and you know, full of life. It was Duke, wasn't it? Bulletproof, no, Duke's he did brother. Ran into Duke, Duke's okay. Brother. But anyhow, uh, he was telling somebody about hitting him, and uh, anyhow, somebody said, was, you, was he hurt, Fred? He said, no, he wasn't hurt, but he said, I took him out of his truck area, out of his car, and he said, and I hurt him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he was wonderful.